Hi, and welcome to Gameplay Animation Show or Review. My name is Christian Jonjuk, and I've been an animation director in the video games industry for about 16 years now. So I thought I would review someone's reel that I know extremely well, and I've chose myself. So I firmly believe is to slowly over time replace shots that are redundant. Your student reel and it's full of student work, and then over time, you effectively remove your student work with better work. Um, I did a reel in 2010, and I'll show later. And it's about time that I do a reel for 2016. I believe that you should do one at least every five years, and I've kind of left mine six years. So anyway, um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. Without further ado, let's get started. Last night was an A1 tip top clubbing jam fair. It was a sandwich of fun on ecstasy bread wrapped up in a big bag like disco fudge. It doesn't get much better than that. I just wish sometimes I could control these f***ing mood swings. couple of things of note first is when originally I sent this, um, I sent it in the form of this physical DVD and the reason I did this is because there was no YouTube so I wanted to catch people's attention first thing, this was the first thing that they would see and I didn't want to just put it to one side and forget about it, I wanted to have like a nice little package and I put all these like screenshots on the back and I put this GQ quote which I thought was hilarious at the time, it wasn't. To me, I think my point is, is um, I think it's really important to present well, so let's just go through it. And the narrative for mine is I wanted it as if people were kind of flicking through TV channels. And I quite like that. I, uh, it's something I would still probably do. I don't think it gets in the way. But everything was keyframed in this. I wanted to make a point of uh, doing that because I hadn't used any motion capture. So I wanted to kind of show what I was capable of that way. So I believe that your first shot should be your best. This is not my best shot. Um, but then I come to these shots and I really like what I did. You know, it's like, let me just go through that. I like what I did with the whole, with the one, two, kind of three. These were coming in on the beat, um, which I don't think is bad. But the thing is, again, is I was editing, I was trying to fast pace edit. And I think that the problem with that is you don't necessarily see the animation you know it's like I look at how stiff these shoulders are for example you know it's like I was trying to to do things that way but you see that these shoulders are like super stiff and the shoulders uh, like they're attached to the torso in such a way that there's no real role um, the animation wasn't terrible so let's go through uh, this is one of the first shots I think I got rid of but the point of this shot was to show my ability to, to animate weight you see the way the scissors go down? I liked that at the time. It didn't take me that long. It took me like 20 minutes to animate that. But I don't think that's a good thing, the fact that I put some that took me 20 minutes to animate on my reel. It's like I look at like how these wrists were broken. Cut it. Get rid of it. It does not do any favours. So I did. This shot I actually quite liked. Um, it showed the main character of the game kind of getting underneath the car and I like the little adjustment it shows a decent amount of weight there if you see it it's like there's no you know the weight is over the right place there it's also over this foot um, he's like he's starting to look down there I think that that is works pretty well and then you know he puts his hand down he puts this hand and this hand down at exactly the same time um there's a lot of twinning in this reel um which i don't tend to do much of now and i certainly call out i think it's a very easy thing to fix um but it's something that i would certainly notice now that i didn't notice then kind of the little bump when he goes down 
but it showed uh, some more interesting body mechanics instead of just picking up a box to me this was it was a really good way of showing a character going from one position to another position this was all before i understood about loops and interaction and how long an animation needed to be so this was my first attempt at a stealth walk and that is one of the first things with my animators i look for now is knees and ankles i didn't know that at the time um, also i look at these fingers and how static they are 2016 version of me looking at 2005 version of me would call out fingers knees ankles um, and again i don't think these are bad things i just think these are things that um, I, I certainly look to adjust now. I certainly look to help the animators out. And I like to have more interesting poses, more looseness in the hands. I could still have those hands maybe a little bit looser. I've done a lot of these since, so I would certainly put those in and show. Um, I probably could have had this last a little bit longer and then maybe show other things that I would do with this animation. Look at this. Look at all that, that fresh air. I think that your reel is only as strong as the weakest shot on there. And the weakest shot is going to be the shot that people like myself are going to remember. So I think I hid a lot of my weaknesses with the way I edited things. Um, the, yeah, especially this shot. No, there's no animation in it. It's just a camera move. Through my own admission, I was lacking quality content. Um, you know, it's like I was just trying to get a reel done so I could get it out there. And again, it's like I learned a lot from doing this. This was my first professional reel. We were keyframing everyone singing in American and Pop Idol. Um, we didn't have access to motion capture, so I was trying to do it in such a way that we could reuse all these moves for gestures. It was absolutely mind-numbing animating to the same song. There's a lot of animators that, that, that just don't animate fingers well. Um, so it's important that I think that you do that now. And I think that it's a small detail again. If you animate fingers well, and these small things, it shows that you've paid attention to even the smallest detail. And I think that's really good. But but what I did like and what I, I liked about this is it showed kind of subtlety and movement. This shot, I would, uh, this was the first proper combat move, I think, that is in my reel. Um, and the fact that it took like almost halfway through my reel to show it. I think that it shows how much I've changed. Um, I would certainly not do this as a jump. I would do it as a slide tackle. I probably should have referenced more footballers than karate experts, I think. I have from the point of pushing the button to actually getting back up to doing something else again, all within 30 frames. And if I was going to be restricted by 30 frames again, I certainly wouldn't do a jump a jump attack you know like not this kind of not going down to the ground and then coming back up there's too big of a movement this was before i understood about interruptions and blends and and the correct way to animate combat i was certainly a slave to the restrictions that i thought i had so then we have this shot what i i notice is there's a lot of twinning and you can't see it because it's behind there but the arms the it's just both together and it looks strange but again it's a small detail that it's something i would notice now you know there's no struggle on the guys he's coming back he goes straight into his loop again because i didn't really know about i wanted to have the entry as quick as possible and i wanted to have the loop you know get into the loop as quick as possible he goes straight into this struggle and there's no kind of get off me get off me and i'll probably do something with that and then and just make this loop look a little bit more interesting um the animation is not bad it just as a system it's just a bit dull again you see the fact that the shoulders and the torso were all together there's no like the arms go around and whipping round, and then the head spinning round. there's none of that here and then this is completely off balance you know whereas this should have being certainly up here a bit more and then have the head round there and then the center should have been more a little bit through there and then he kind of he compresses down here and then i think he'll pop back up and then it's weird it's like he's done this roundhouse move but then ended up in a push kick i know why i animated like this uh, at the time i was restricted to you know like making sure that um everything happened within this channel this move either doesn't fit or i would animate it differently it doesn't need a roundhouse and a push 
I could have just gone with a push kick, a straightforward push kick kind of like James Bond, Daniel Craig-esque. He used to do that a lot. Or the, you know, like the 300, this is Sparta, that sort of thing. It's too busy an animation. This head whipping around a little bit more, which would then lead to the hips as well. You know, it's like, but I also have this leg and the knee is facing that way, but then the, the foot is kind of facing away. These are things that I really wouldn't do now. You can see the momentum from the spin should then carry on past this. Not a terrible animation, but certainly one that could very much be improved upon knowing what I know now. And I still like how this was like a yellow background here, and then there's like a different shade of yellow, and then, you know, then the victim was kind of blue. It made it stand out, and I think I really liked that, and I liked how the main character was all textured, and I think I had like about four or five lights in there, because again, I didn't really understand lighting. This is interesting, because then you look at this, so you've got this walk, so it's this walk put here, what I would do with this now is I would animate this with the layer and I would probably show them side by side, which I actually did in my 2010 reel. You know, and I liked how he was kind of doing this, this move here. I, I liked that at the time, you know, he kind of goes, hey, how you doing? Or you over there, sorry. And then kind of points to his hip and says, look, I've got a weapon. We're like, look, we've got a problem, we've got a problem. And I think that's a reference from Boys in the Hood. Again, you can see I overcompensated with the hip bone here, um, meaning that the hip was probably really high, but then you could see that the neck and the spine are something, so I would have had that. This, to me, is a super uncomfortable position. Like the lines here certainly bring these hips down a little bit, um, and I would certainly have this guy looking down at what he's doing. You know, the way he just lifts his leg back, there's no anticipation with it and uh, it's like there was room for at least a little bit of anticipation you know it was like it was trying to show weight and anticipation and timing and and all the fundamentals because i look at that broken ankle there and then the hips are in a weird way there and then this leg is all the way back there you know but this highlights also something that i don't recommend people do now look at all that motion blur that hides so much but i've got so much motion blur over here you can't really see anything that's going on that's a bad thing it's why what are you trying to hide you know same with camera moves actually you know like if you get too many camera moves and edits which my my reel had lots of edits it can it can come across as you're trying to hide something and although i wasn't hiding something i just wasn't aware of it at the time this move wasn't bad uh, i could have spent more time with this because it was it was an interact certainly a bit more scramble kind of going up the wall i think i cheated a little bit with the way this neck was the torso was bent i would certainly bring that center up a little bit more so you're swinging the legs over i would definitely have a bit more weight as he drops down and then really kind of landing in that i probably would have stayed down there and maybe kind of had a look around a little bit more and this is okay this is okay i think the nice little kind of comic asides this i probably would cut i don't know really why this was in here it doesn't really do me any favors um this combat move was me getting a little bit better but it's still got this cartoony kind of i mean you got a really nice strong pose and you can see that this ends up becoming quite readable but what I would do now is you see there's this is frame this is one frame this is the second frame there's no contact frame in there just because I think contact frames do make them more readable you see everything kind of stays on that line and I think that worked really really well for me um I wouldn't have him come off his feet anymore but again I think maybe this was the style I was going for at the time and again I would probably bring this up here a little bit more it looks like he's punching him in the neck and again, I think that I would just clean this up, make it a little bit more readable. It's not a bad animation, um, but I certainly wouldn't have it in my reel today. And then, ah, yeah, there's these wrists, the wrists. Like having the wrist like this always looks a bit strange, so just bring it down like that. You can see it, you can see it there. I had a little, I, I, I love that now, I still think that works. The, there's a little shoulder shrug afterwards, you know, it's like, 
let's go. I think that's kind of cool, I think that works. This move is, I, I feel this is the move that clinched an interview. There's so many weight issues and intersections and go ahead, pose to pose. There was no cleverness in here. It was just pure animation, all of it. And I might kind of do something a little bit different with this uh, whilst he's on the floor. So this shot is uh, was a personal piece. I was trying to prove that I could animate facial animation. I could animate the dialogue. I hadn't done much of it at the time. Um, and I got around it by not really animating lip sync at all. Um, I was trying to focus on eye movement and eyebrows because I, I believe, and I still actually believe now, but I believe um, that you can get a lot of personality from the eyes and the eyebrows. I didn't think it was necessary as a gameplay animator. Again, this was very naive at the time. Last night. Last night was A1 tip top clubbing jam fur. It was a sandwich of fun on ecstasy bread wrapped up in a big bag of, like disco fudge. It doesn't get much better than that. I just wish sometimes I could control these f***ing mood swings. So this was based on uh, a character from Space. Things that I don't like about this now, again you can see twinning all over the place. But I was trying to be as expressive as possible. It was my first attempt at animating dialogue. I've done a lot more since then, but I felt like this was a good shot to end my reel on. At the time, it was one of my better shots. Ironically, this isn't in my 2010 reel. And then I put a bunch of my artwork in here, which again, as an animator, I think that you don't need to put that in your reel. At the time, I thought, right, I'm going to show that I can do everything, but that just wasn't important. Some of the differences between my 2005 and 2010 um you can see i kept the uh the tv screen beginning but then i straight straight away went into uh some assassin's creed stuff which was clearly some of my better work this may not be my best shot which probably i could still improve on which i think works but you can see i kept with the yellow the blue theme um, you know i've got my logo down the corner now <laughs> So I was showing a combination of gameplay shots, because like, then you could see it in the context of the game. Um, this was completely keyframed. This was a combination of keyframe and uh, uh, motion capture. Um, um, so you can see so far, there's like there's there's no shots. This is something I was really happy with, that, and I will keep this. And you know, and it was just showing like the head moving around and, and just showing like how to add some variety to a loop. This I think shows an understanding of gameplay systems as well. Assassin stuff, more assassin stuff. Um, there was a weight exercise here, which was cool. Um, again, trying to show hit animations. In fact, actually, there is none of my 2005 work in this 2010 reel, but it certainly shows um, uh, progress. The other reel I actually did, which I recommend people seriously take a look at maybe doing, is I did a, a gameplay reel. And it was, to me, this was just purely gameplay systems and it was just trying to show how I make them blend, how I make them work with layers, how I make them work with all sorts of things. I would do a, six, a two meter version and a six meter version, could blend them together, which would give me anything in between. But this was all really useful and certainly something that I still reference now. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you like what you've seen, then please subscribe. If you uh, would like me to review your reel, then please send me a comment. And for now, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. My name's Christian Jonju, and this has been Gameplay Animation Show Review. Take care, and good luck.